guys, welcome back. We are in section two of my series, Fitting for Apparel Design. In this section, we're gonna be talking all about grading and how that is related to the fit for your apparel brand. Again, I apologize for any of the interruptions that happen. I am in the middle of um, rearranging and moving my studio. And so we're kind of out here in a more relaxed environment, but you might see my dog run by from time to time. Oh. Apologies for the interruptions, um, but let's get started. So grading is such a great skill to understand. You definitely don't have to be a master of grading in order to be a great um, brand owner or designer, but it's really a great um, skill to understand in order to communicate with your factory better and to understand your own sizing. As always, I have a full blog post on this that illustrates everything that we're talking about, and I will link that down below. So what is grading? So to put it super simply, grading is just scaling your pattern up or down. And that is going to be based off your size chart and your grade rules that you create for your brand. And if you are a little bit confused on how to create a size chart or um, kind of what the grade rules should look like, I have a whole post and video on that as well. And I also have pre-made templates that you can use that you can shop on my website. And I'll link all that stuff down below. Because there are no set size standards in the fashion industry, it's really up to you to create a size and grade structure that really works for you and your brand. And I talk about that in the post that I will link down below. The way you wanna think about grading is that the body is divided into sections. And each of those sections is gonna grow at a different rate and it's gonna change at a different rate or shrink at a different rate. And so what we're doing in grading is we are splitting apart the pattern in those specific um, sections and then we are moving the pattern either up or down or left or right in order to grow or shrink the pattern to the next size. Each body and stature is completely unique. That's why it's really important to understand your customer base and what their body type is like. But regardless of that, every single body has the same landmarks that we can use to grade our patterns. And those are the points that we are gonna pay attention to today. I'm not gonna go into every single landmark and every type of different pattern and uh, grading structure because that is just like, a whole thing in and of itself. We're really just gonna go over the basics right now, and I'm gonna use the same pattern that we used for the last section to give you an example of how it's all gonna work. So these landmarks should be reflected in your tech pack and your points of measure. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, I'll link those tutorials down below. And you can also get pre-made um, points of measure and tech pack on my website in the shop. <music> So you might be wondering, why do I even need to understand grading? Like this is so technical. Like I'm a brand owner or I'm a business owner. Or I'm a designer. Like why do I need to know this information? And it's kind of the same thing that we talked about in um, the first section of the series under pattern making. It's more about the ability to communicate with your factory about changes, especially in the context of fitting your garments and creating a size set, you really want to understand what your factory is doing and what your factory or your pattern maker grader, whoever you're working with, is doing and how they are changing your pattern and what those changes mean for the fit of your garment. And if you're making changes within the fit session, you really want to know how that's going to affect your size run. So the knowledge of grading gives you the ability to more accurately fit your extended size run. Not only that, but it also gives you the ability to communicate with your customers about sizing better. And that, as you probably have experienced in your own life, is such a huge thing for brands. I hate it when I fit in one piece from a brand in one size and I'm like, oh, okay, I'll get a medium again in this other style. And it fits completely different. So it's really important to maintain consistent sizing. And that's kind of like, this knowledge is gonna make it so that you're able to do that for your customers. I've also included a short glossary in my blog post that kind of goes through the different terms that I'll be referencing during this tutorial. So if you're confused about any of the things that I'm talking about, definitely go check that out. I'm not gonna go through the whole thing here on camera because you don't need to sit through all of that. <laughs> Just know that that's there uh, as a resource for you. So in the past, patterns were actually graded manually, and they still are today. It's just a little bit less common. 
but it was all started by hand using a grading machine and there are several different types of grading machines and they all have different names. But basically what the grading machine does is it's a super, super calculated and precise ruler that is going to move your pattern around and every time you move it, you mark that point, move it again and mark that point and move it again and mark that point. And you're moving it in the increments that we are breaking the body up into. So our different landmarks, we're, we're marking all of those points. And then at the very end, you go back through and then you connect all of those lines and there's certain rules behind that as well. And then you have your new pattern, whether you're going up a size or down a size. And then um, pattern makers, graders are gonna have to do that for the entire size set of your brand. And so it's definitely much easier to do that on the computer these days. So that's what you're most commonly going to see. I have a tutorial that I found online that shows how to grade a pattern using a manual grading machine. I don't have one, so I'm not gonna show you that as an example. I'm not gonna walk you through manual grading, but I will definitely link that tutorial in my blog post. <laughs> All right, so let's get into how to grade a pattern. We're gonna be using the exact same pattern that we created in section one of the series. Um, same size, same everything, same fabric, all that. So we already went through that in section one. Um, the difference with this is we are going to be using a one inch grade. So we're gonna be going from a size eight to a size 10. And in this example, I'm going to be grading this pattern in Illustrator, but I wanted to talk a little bit more about computer grading in the industry as a standard. So just like we talked about before, using CAD software, pattern software, um, a factory or your grader pattern maker is going to plug in your specs that will then be calculated into your size set using your grade rules. And so when you have all of your grade rules and your size chart and all of that figured out, it becomes very, very simple to create consistent sizing through your brand. That's why it's so important to have because your factory is just plugging in those numbers and everything's getting calculated for them. Now it's important to understand that for specific styles, things may be graded slightly differently. So just like what we talked about in the grading section of DIY technical design, you are going to have a tech pack that has all of your calculations already in it. So you can plug in your specs and all of your specs are graded out throughout your size range for your factory. And that is how the tech pack template that I have in my shop is set up. All you have to do is plug in your specs and plug in your grade rules and everything else is calculated for you. And that's exactly how it works for your factory and how they have it set up in their computer. Same thing, they're just plugging in the specs of your base size pattern and then they are using your grade rules to grade out everything and the computer is plotting all of those points for them. So we're just gonna do it manually, just on Illustrator. We're basically doing the same thing, just it's a little bit, little bit longer. So what we are gonna do is we're gonna take that pattern that we created in section one, and we're just gonna split it apart by those landmarks that we talked about earlier. And then for each of those pieces, we're gonna move the pattern up, down, left, right, whatever it may be to get to our next size. I definitely find it helpful to have sort of like a key chart so that you don't have to keep going back and referencing, you know, a book or the, however you have your grade rules set up. So as far as I know, there aren't any plugins for Illustrator at the moment where you can just plug in your specs and everything is calculated out for you and plotted for you. Um, but you can, of course, purchase pattern software that is exactly the same as what your factory uses and um, it will plot your points for you. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna walk you through how I grade my patterns in Adobe Illustrator. Here are some tips that you might find helpful when grading your own patterns at home. You can set the distance that your object moves using your arrow keys. I have mine set to an eighth of an inch. I like to take my original block um, pattern that I've created and then paste it into a new layer. And then I lock the original layer just so that I don't lose any of that information. 
and I'm actually not one to use a ton of layers like when I'm doing my technical sketches and stuff I just didn't learn it that way uh, so I just want to really like reiterate how important layers have been for me when grading my patterns um, in Illustrator so definitely use your patterns to your advantage and all we're gonna do is we're gonna paste it on top and then we're gonna cut it apart in those little um, sections that we talked about earlier you do have the ability to use Illustrator's blend tool to approximate a size between two other sizes. The problem with this is that it is not, it's approximating a path, essentially. It's approximating the object in between. And as we just talked about, grading is not just, you know, a one size fits all thing. Every piece is going to be moving at a different increment for different reasons. But I did want to bring it up just because I think that it's something that you should know about because if you're in a pinch and you know you need to do something really quickly, it might be really helpful to have that. Um, but I definitely don't recommend it, but just know that that is an option if in some circumstance that might be a better option for you. You don't need to grade your pattern in order to fit it on a half scale form. So if you're using a half scale form, as long as your pattern is the same size as your half scale form. So like, for example, I have a half scale form, it's a size four. Um, so as long as I'm using a size four pattern, all I have to do is go into the transform function on Illustrator and I can just scale it down by 50% and you're done. If you'd like more information on printing um, or digital pattern making, definitely check out section one of this series. Okay, so let's get into the tutorial. I'm going to show you how to grade the pattern that we created in section one from a size eight to a size 10. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through how to grade our bodice pattern. As you can see here, I've included the templates that I talked about earlier in the video. So you can see my grading template and you can also see how the pattern is broken apart. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep this on the workstation. Um, I definitely recommend that you make one of these for yourself based on your grading rules, if you're doing your own grading and having it um, just readily available and next to you while you are grading because it makes it so much easier. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up and make sure that my arrow key keyboard increments are where I want them. I believe earlier in the video, I said it was at an eighth of an inch, but actually I have mine at 1 16th. And um, you'll see why that's important in a second. So you'll just enter that information here. Hit okay. So I'm going to copy and paste that. And just for the sake of you guys being able to see what I'm doing, I am going to make a copy of just the pattern. And I'm going to color it. Let's just give it like a light, oops, give it a light gray, just so you guys can see what the original looked like. All right, so then let's move um, all of this into layer two and lock that original layer. And this is what I was talking about earlier that your layers are just so important uh, to keep your sanity when you're grading. So definitely use them. Okay, so now we are going to break this apart and you can see how I've broken on my template um, the areas of the different sections apart. So these lines are going to be our guides. And we are going to just cut at the corners and then we're going to go back and fill this in. But you just want a part of every single piece. Okay, so now that we've done that, I'm going to delete these lines so that I don't get confused. And I'm also going to delete the lines 
that we uh, just cut apart. So I'm just deleting the lines in between because we'll go back in and fill those in afterwards. And then I'll just make this um, a little bit larger. I try to work at the lowest line point that I can see so that it doesn't change um, my measurements at all. But just for the sake of you guys being able to see it better, <laughs> we'll just make them super big, but definitely don't do this. Uh, if you are grading yourself, definitely use like the smallest line uh, width that you can. Okay, so we are going to be working in a counterclockwise um, sequence and starting with the neckline. So I'm going to highlight all of my points and we're going to move up one eighth of an inch. So I'm going to do two arrow keys up, one, two. Then I'm going to unselect that point that we just made. So essentially think about it like we just traced that line. So just this line is um, the only one that's finished and everything else still needs to move. So I'm just going to unselect that one so it stays there. So now we are up here. We're going to go up 1 16th and then we're going to go to the left 1 16th. So we're going to go up and left. Same thing. We're going to unselect. Then we're going to go down 1 16th and left 1 16th. So down 1 16th and left 1 16th. Then we're gonna unselect this one and then we're gonna go down 1 8th. So remember that your keyboard increments are at 1 16th, so we need to go down twice. One, two. Then we'll unselect that one and then we need to go to the left 1 8th. One, two unselect and down one eighth, one, two. Now, when you get to the, um, the dart, we are going to want to go back to zero. And what that means is, let me throw in a guide here. And it's always helpful to have your grids and guides on. I'm not, I don't have them on right now, but, um, definitely use those to your advantage. So you can see this is the center front. So we want to go back to zero at the center front. We're not going to go up or down, just back to zero. So one, two, three, four. And then what we're going to do is we are going to move the dart on its own. So we're going to unselect that. And we are going to go to the left, one eighth, one, two. And then we're going to deselect our dart legs and we're going to go up one eighth at our dart point, one, two. And then to finish off, uh, we wanna make sure that this point is back at zero, which it already is. And we're just gonna go down one eighth, one, two. And there you go. So now we have all of our points set up. And so what you'll do is you can go back in and then fill in all of these points. So it's really easy with these straight pieces. These are just going to connect. And the center front is always going to be straight, side seam, straight. And then you can use your curved rulers to go in and fill in the curved sections to match them up just perfectly. Okay, and now we have our curves, so we can go in and fill in the um, all of the curved pieces of our pattern. So you can start to see how the patterns will eventually look once you get everything graded out. I'll change this to a smaller point so maybe you can see a little bit better. 
kind of how the grading is working. And again, just to reiterate, I'm not doing this super like precisely. I'm just trying to give you guys an idea of how this works. Of course, it will matter based on the sizes that you're um, going from and to. It'll depend on your size chart. It'll depend on your grade rules and all of that. Um, and once you've created um, a whole set of grades, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but you'll see how they are um, nested in a grade like this. And it makes it super easy when you have them set up into uh, layers like this. So it's super easy to just go in and lock the layers that you're not using just so you can like pick out one of the one of the patterns that you want to use, or you can just turn them off so you can see better. And it's just really handy to have all of that information. So this can give you kind of a good idea of the fitting DIY kit that I talked about in section one and kind of what's going to be included in it. Obviously, it'll be much more precise than this and um, much more calculated and it'll have all of the grading information, grade rules, um, size chart and everything uh, included with it. So you'll really have kind of like a holistic package of everything that you'll need. Um, but this just gives you kind of a good idea of how you might use those things and kind of what they're going to look like. So that is my quick and dirty tutorial of how to grade a pattern. And I hope to do a more in-depth tutorial of this in the future. And, and if you're interested in something like that, please leave a comment um, or reach out to me directly so that I know that you guys are interested in that type of tutorial. So there's just a couple other things that I wanted to talk about in relation to grading. Um, you might be wondering why can't we just use that same transform function that we talked about before for half scale patterns? Why can't we just use that instead of having to plot each individual point? Why can't we just transform by a percentage and have our other size created for us? And the reason for that is because it is not growing equally and it is not shrinking equally. Each piece is growing by a different increment. Um, and to understand this a little bit better, think about growing up and buying clothes throughout your life. You probably um, you know, grew in height and maybe not necessarily in width as you grew up as a child. But now that you're an adult, you are probably either growing or shrinking width-wise, but you're not growing or shrinking in height. And so that is kind of like the science behind why grading is so important and why it is not growing at an equal percentage because your height is staying the same and just your width is changing. Furthermore, on that same subject, that is why petite and plus sizing is so important uh, to the fashion industry and why it is also very complicated because it is focused on height and then with growing or shrinking. And so that is why it can be very complicated. And especially as a pattern maker, if you're looking at a pattern, it can be a little wonky looking at those patterns because of how the body is growing or shrinking in comparison to the height. All right, so if you're interested in learning some more in-depth concepts about grading, I wanted to talk through a few books that I recommend. Um, I talked about this book it is called Technical Sourcebook for Designers by J.L. Lee, and actually that was one of my professors when I went to school. And um, this has a small section on grading. It's definitely great for technical design information and drawing flats, so I definitely recommend it for that. It has a very short section on grading, sort of like an introduction. Um, so I would definitely recommend this for like introductory grading. It kind of talks about the same things that we just talked about in this tutorial. Um, but if you want to get into more in-depth information, I um, was recommended this book by my mentor, uh, Sarah Mosier. She's amazing. Thank you, Sarah. Shout out to you. And it's really great. It goes through all the different pattern pieces and how to grade them. Um, so this is sort of like a good intermediary book just to kind of understand um, all of the fundamentals about basic grading. If you're looking for a more in-depth book, and you really want to master grading, I highly recommend Concepts of Pattern Grading by Kathy K. Mullet. And this has um, all the information, including information for computer grading, which is really great. 
um, and I've really been enjoying this book. It's definitely much more um, in depth and it also includes the ASTM standards that I talk about in DIY technical design. Um, and so that's kind of an added bonus so that you don't have to buy them. They're just included in this book, which is great. Um, and I guess I didn't say the name of this one. This one's Grading Techniques for Fashion Design by Jean Price and Bernard Zamkoff. So if you're a little overwhelmed by all of this information about grading, please just remember that as a designer or a brand owner, you do not need to master grading by any means. Um, but it is an, an essential skill to at least understand so that you can communicate with your team members better, with your customers better, and with your factory better. So it's a really great skill to understand. But if you are a startup company or a startup brand and you kind of want to have those foundational um, fit blocks, for your brand, I am launching a product on the 27th of February. I'm going to be releasing the Fit DIY Kit, and that will include all of the block patterns graded out through a size range. It also includes a size chart. That size chart also has the grade rules, and all of that is set up. And you can choose between men's, women's, or a combination of both. And so that is a great option if you're looking for a foundation for your brand. It also comes with some other awesome things in it. It also comes with digital curved rulers. So if you are changing those blocks that come with it in Illustrator, uh, you can definitely print them without having Illustrator. There will be a PDF included. But if you are editing them in Illustrator, those curved rulers are definitely essential to have. Um, it'll have a fit sheet. So in your fit sessions, uh, you'll have a fit sheet to record all the changes for your garments and that I'll have a fit sheet template included in this little kit, as well as an ebook guide for common fit issues and how to fix them. And like I said, it will have uh, the block patterns in both PDF and Illustrator files, and it will also have the size chart that goes along with whichever patterns you decide to choose. And just so you know, all of my subscribers to my email list will be getting a 20% discount when this launches on February 27th. So if you'd like to get a discount, you can definitely sign up and I will leave that link below. All right, guys, so that does it for the second section of Fitting for Apparel Design. Thank you so much for joining me. And please, as always, let me know if you have comments, questions. Uh, I always check my DMs on Instagram. So if you want to just shoot me a quick question, you can definitely do it there. Uh, comment on YouTube. Please uh, like, comment, share, subscribe. Every little bit counts and I really, really appreciate it because the more people that are following me, it means the more people are seeing my information and are getting help on their fashion journey. So I definitely really appreciate it. All right guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week for section three.